MK7 or MK4? MK4, mate. It's the animal form. We don't want the plant form. About a third of the population can't even convert the shit. And it stays resident in the bloodstream. And some people are questioning whether there are some studies that show could it be um, have in some people uh, a pro-oxidant effect? We don't know yet. We don't really have the research to say that. I can't say that. Nobody can say that. There is some, it seems, some anecdotes of reactivity that some, but they they never really looked at those elements in the research. They sort of saw certain markers in certain people, but they didn't investigate. So we don't really know because we don't have the research. But uh, if you take a look at the most studies that have been done, and this is the funny thing, you go to the Rotterdam study that was done in um, uh, in the Netherlands, they used MK4. You go to the Japanese study, that's Japan, where NATO, NATO the MK7, um, and the Japanese are very good converters of MK7 genetically because they've been exposed to these foods for a very long time. Um, Europeans are very poor in comparison. So it depends on the exposure to certain foods and adaptations. So MK7 is the one, and the MK7 is the only menaquinone within the K2 family that basically directly influences the DNA, that means can directly um, have an epigenetic influence on the DNA. No other menaquinone can do that. It's the animal form. And if you take a look at the, what I call the dinosaur family, and the dinosaur family, g'day, Lukey. Good to see you here. And the dinosaur family are birds. Uh, ostriches, emus, all the feathered um, creatures out there. They have extremely high levels of MK4. Um, Actually, things like chicken has got far more MK4 than, than red meats. You know, so, and uh, I mean, they do sell um, some, there's a, there's a couple of Australian companies now that do sell um, emu oil which is very high in MK4 as well. Um, I've never bought it because I can't see the value. Um, I eat eggs. I eat, you know, brie, which is pure MK4. The bacteria uh, um, in brie and camembert only produces MK4, which is great. And there's Gouda, which the Dutch consume. And, uh, you know, yeah, it's, you know, eggs, liver, um, but even red meats, they do have MK4, but not as much as um, chicken. Chicken is the highest um, of the sort of the meat foods out there. So I always put a bit of chicken into my diet as well once a week. Um, I know a lot of people are concerned, but go and see my poofer um, videos and you'll understand that it's a load of fucking nonsense on that on that part as well. So emu oil goes rancid quickly. I don't know enough about emu oil to be, I'm just talking about what it is as, as an oil. Um, I don't know its composition um, or anything else about it, but uh, you know, if you've done research, I'll take your word for it, but I haven't looked into it. I just know about it that it does have MK4. But it's not, as I said, it's not something I recommend because I don't know enough about it. The problem with most oils, they do have some level of rancidity. Um, it's probably something I should look into. But it, since I don't recommend it, um, I don't see the value. I don't recommend oils in general. I think that oils, once you turn something into an oil, it, you up the oxidation, primary and secondary products and aldehydes and that's what we've seen with all oils even olive oil you know um avocado oil it's all the same stuff you'll get you know there's a difference when it's actually in a matrix of an actual real food it's far more stable once you remove it from that it's less stable it's simple as that we've talked about this before um m curves um so it's not it's one thing that as people that know me on my channel 
I've never recommended oils. I've been quite staunchly opposed to oils of any sort from, you know, so I'll be quite emphatic on that. Um, no, I don't have one on soy. Or, um, yeah, probably we'll probably make something on soy at some stage. Um, there's a lot, a lot, a look, a lot of people have actually already said a lot of things about how bad it is. You know, you know, it's not on the hormone system and many other aspects, but at some point, yes, I will cover that area as well. But yes, the MK4 from Animal Foods is the way to go, is the one that we are species adapted to and the one that our DNA responds to as well. So, you know, so if we want our genes to work properly, our bodies to work properly and functioning in terms of, you know, a number of, you know, brain functions require MK4 directly, um, uh, you know, your bone mineralization, your bone um, sort of density and bone remodeling also requires MK4. So there are basically enzymes that are transcripted due to vitamin retinol and vitamin D, and then M these um, are activated by MK by the K2. So in that regard, so you 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 need basically you know for osteocalcin and stuff like that, but there's a whole lot of other things. MK4 is also great for decalcifying soft tissue. None of the other metaquinones can do it. It's got like a double hook, and it can actually go into soft tissue and remove cal calcium. None of the other metaquinones can do that. That's the magic of animal metaquinones compared to plant metaquinones. The body's the body's had all this sort of stuff, all these systems that's been designed to work with the animal food compounds that are coming from animal foods. You know, so all species, depending on what their species appropriate diet is, adapt their whole system to that. Yes, they may have starvation foods that fall back things. But at the end of the day, that's what they primarily adapt to. And that's the very important thing. And that's when you look at the genetics of certain compounds and how they influence, you realize, you start realizing, you start counting off these things and going, it's just all animal foods. So, you know, say no more. <laughs>